Hello, my name is Bob A. Lyons, Chancellor's Professor at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Today I'm going to present a short Pachakucha presentation on the Association for Creative Zoology. This presentation was presented during Mike Knight and is as follows. In 1901, Everett Ormsby Hoax established Hoax scholarly lithography in London, England to advance discovery in the fields of archaeology, medicine, and natural sciences. This presentation will focus on Hoax's publications for Reverend James Randolph Denton from Philadelphia, who founded the Association for Creative Zoology. The association advocated that species diversity is not the result of natural selection, but is the evidence of the use of zoomorphic juncture by God to produce hybrid creatures. The adult male centaur specimen on display at the Hodges Library is an example of this kind of hybridity. The King James edition of the Bible references unicorns and dragons and other chimera. Dragons, a creature which combines the features of mammals, reptiles, and birds, are represented in many world cultures. This lithograph depicts a related specimen, a giraffe snake. Some skeptics will point to the unicorn as evidence that the Bible is a work of fiction. However, single horned creatures such as the rhinoceros exist today. Who is to say that a one horned wild goat did not perish in the great global flood as described in the Bible? The Association for Creative Zoology first came to Tennessee in the summer of 1925 during the famous trial in Dayton of the high school science teacher John Scopes. For the trial, the association set up educational kiosks on the courthouse lawn. This photograph depicts my reconstruction of one of Denton's displays. The major tome rare zoological specimens included this print, which depicts a duck-billed platypus in the lower right, a curious creature that Reverend Denton claimed was an example of God's use of zoomorphic juncture by combining a beaver and a duck. Rare zoological specimens also includes this lithograph depicting the kangaroo rat and the kangaroo gazelle. Through this juxtaposition, one can gain a profound understanding of the ways animal hybridity is manifest in the natural kingdom. I'm sure many of you have heard of the catfish but have you heard of Microteris trichopolaris, the fish cat? Microteris are in the bass family, while trico is Latin for hair and polaris for ball. In Latin, this creature essentially means bass with hairballs. The fish cat is part of the broader genus of swimming creatures creative zoologists refer to as trico piscidae, or hairy fish. Can anyone identify which of these beasts is not kosher to eat? Yes, you are correct, the one with cloven hoofs. A good example of Trichopiscidae is the groundhog fish. While most fur-covered fish are thought to come from northern waters, this specimen was caught by Lester Morgan of Lenore City, Tennessee, from the Holston River, and is now in the collection of the hoax archives. One of the central missions of the Association for Creative Zoology is to educate our youth, and its success may explain why a belief in creationism persists in America today. This photo shows my presentation of the kiosks in the Garden of the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia. The 20th century philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein is credited with using the image of the duck rabbit to argue for the limits of human perception. By contrast, this folding print of a duck rabbit was used to advance public understanding of creative zoology. Taxidermy can also help the general public gain an understanding of the natural world in general and creation science in particular. Here we can see three avian hybrids from left to right, the gorilla hen, a flying squirrel, and a raccoon crow. The flying squirrel is classified as an ornithological quadruped. 
popularly known as a four-legged bird. While the griffin is a common example from the ancient world, less well-known is the Amazonian lizard hawk, shown to the right. Here we see two additional ornithological quadrupeds, the majestic Nordic hare falcon, the mascot of Listford, Norway, and the American badger swallow. Two badger swallows were shot by the explorers Lewis and Clark along the Missouri River in 1804. An important Tennessee fossil discovered by the Association for Creative Zoology is the bull raccoon, or Taurus crocotensis, named for the Tennessee frontiersman David Crockett. This specimen was discovered south of Nashville in 2004 when utility work was being dug for a new subdivision in Williamson County. Given its Tennessee origins, there are efforts to have our legislature in Tennessee designate the bull raccoon as our official antediluvian animal. A recent proposed bill was unfortunately sent to summer study, but it may once again come up for consideration. Because of the presence of this noble beast in Tennessee, it's easy to imagine a time in the future when the bull raccoon may serve as a mascot for one of our favorite sports teams with thousands of fans wearing fashionable bull raccoon hats. Reverend James Randolph Denton's contributions to creative zoology cannot be understated. This statue in honor of Denton was proposed for construction in Central Park in New York City in the 1920s. Unfortunately, evolutionists presented it from being prevented it from being erected. These days, when the bogus can be claimed as true, I thank you for this opportunity to share God's artful zoological designs to encourage more scholarship on zoomorphic juncture and to tell the story of the Association for Creative Zoology and the hoax archives. I appreciate your time today and encourage you to visit the hoax archives website. Simply Google Hoax Archives, H-O-K-E-S, which will lead you to our website. Have a great day and thank you.